Hello, info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss another bizarre vanishing star, or technically dimming star, that was only discovered last year in 2024. And in this case, this particular event kind of connects to some of the previous mysteries from other stars like Betelgeuse that potentially did something very similar back in 2019. And though here, back in 2019, everybody wondered if Betelgeuse was about to explode, since then, it taught us quite a lot about what potentially happens in these stars, with this new event from a different star discovered in 2024, uncovering something even more dramatic and something that surprised pretty much everyone. And so let's talk about this new event known as Assassin 24W and connected to what we know about these giant stars and their somewhat bizarre demon events that have now been discovered in at least several different objects. And what's particularly intriguing about this event is that it has some characteristics that are similar to Betelgeuse and other massive stars, but it also presents us with certain unique puzzles that seem to push our understanding of stellar systems even more and seem to reveal entirely new mechanisms. But I guess first, let's quickly revisit some of the previous discoveries from the last five years, focusing on what we know so far. And while as many of you recall, Betelgeuse was probably the most famous of such events. Here, scientists refer to this event as the Great Dimming. And you can learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description. And so between October 2019 and mid-February of 2020, Betelgeuse's brightness dropped by about two-thirds. And though initially scientists did actually think it might go supernova soon, eventually the observations by Hubble revealed that all of this was potentially caused by a huge amount of hot material ejected into outer space, which we now believe may have been caused by a hidden partner, something we've discussed super recently because this is a recent discovery. And so here, a giant bubble of hot plasma rising deep inside the star, traveled through star's atmosphere to colder outer layers, and then eventually cooled down forming tiny dust grains, which then formed this very large dust cloud. And it was this dust cloud that basically blocked the view, making the star dim in the process, but obviously just from the perspective of planet Earth. The star itself was not affected. But as we've discussed in some other videos, this was just the first such discovery, with very similar discoveries then uncovered in some other giant stars as well. For example, the famous VY Canis Majoris, previously one of the largest known stars, or another red supergiant, that seems to have also experienced dimming events very similar to Betelgeuse, but sometimes on a much larger scale. As a matter of fact, at least one eruption we've discussed previously was possibly 100 times more intense than what we observed around Betelgeuse. And these unusual dimmings seem to be due to major eruptions that release a lot of material, which at least for Betelgeuse we know must have been caused by a partner, so something similar may be happening here too. Although it could also be just some kind of a natural process around red supergiants that we just still don't understand. But because these stars are so enormous in size, and because their density is relatively low, any kind of ejection of dust from the surface usually becomes super dramatic. It ends up releasing huge amounts of mass, which eventually dims the star quite a lot. And historically, VY Canis Majoris dimmed quite a lot during the 19th century, actually to about one-sixth of its original brightness. And so now it's barely visible to the naked eye, most likely because so much gas and dust has been now thrown off from the surface, obscuring the star in the process. So this seems to be pretty common around these stars. And so these observations, along with similar observations, like for example from RW Cephi, another massive red giant that dimmed repeatedly as part of the transition from the red supergiant to a hotter phase, tell us that these dramatic dimming events seem to be pretty common for a lot of these red supergiant stars, especially as they go through their various life cycles. And so here it's not always about supernova, it's just about all sorts of activities around the star, including potentially interactions with partners or maybe even massive planets. But now let's turn our attention to this new discovery from just a few months ago, Assassin 24W. Now here the word Assassin is actually an acronym. It stands for All Sky Automated Survey for Supernova. And one of these automated discoveries was this new object, or this new star, that recently underwent a significant dimming event that was completely unexpected. Here's roughly what this event looked like. And this is definitely more extreme than most stars we've seen so far. Here, starting in September of 2024, the star dimmed by about 4.1 magnitudes, meaning that it basically became approximately 96% dimmer, only retaining 4% of its brightness. And this has never been seen before, especially because this lasted for approximately 8.5 months. 
and it only returned to its regular brightness just a couple of months ago from when I'm making this video, mid-2025. And so obviously here this was a major mystery. Scientists wanted to figure out exactly what happened. But the first thing they wanted to figure out is, of course, what kind of a star this is. Is this another red supergiant or is this something entirely different? And turns out that it's not a supergiant. This is an F-type main sequence star, not so different from the Sun actually, only about 1.4 times more massive, that seems to be approximately 3000 light years away from us. And because in this case we don't actually expect sun-like stars to go through this, this was obviously super mysterious. And it of course reminded me of the story of the Tabby star. Another main sequence star that dimmed quite a lot several years ago, or at least one potential explanation, involved the mysterious Dyson sphere. But it was eventually established to be possibly a series of comets, mostly because the emissions were produced by something dusty, and it was unlikely to be something made out of metal or any other artificial structure. Once again, you can learn about this in the description below. And so here we had something very similar in the sense that it was mysterious. But with even more dimming, and even more remarkably, this was an exceptionally symmetric dimming. It involved very similar dimming and very similar rebrightening. As if actually something super super large and super massive blocked the star for at least eight and a half months just to then move into a different location. And here, intriguingly enough, so far nobody brought up the alien explanation yet. Although now, after a few months, we are pretty certain this was definitely a natural event. And so here's what we know about this, and here's what's most likely happening here. First, based on some of the historic observations, including very old Harvard photographs, some which you see right here, Researchers realized that this was not the only such event. The star also dimmed in 1937, 1981, and now 2024, suggesting that this is a periodic event with a period of 43.8 years. But what's even more intriguing, this period was so accurate that here, scientists knew exactly when the dimming should end, and it indeed ended when they thought it would with this strong periodicity being very crucial in trying to understand what's happening. And so by gathering several pieces of evidence, mostly focusing on the material block in the star's light, which scientists refer to as the occulter, here researchers behind a couple of studies you can find in the description made some remarkable discoveries. First, this unusual occulter was nearly achromatic, which is a fancy way of saying that the star's color did not change much, even though it became much much fainter. Or just to rephrase this, the light of all colors was blocked equally, with only a very very slight preference for the blue light compared to other colors. And this is of course really important because it rules out typical interstellar dust, which usually blocks blue light much more effectively. The light was also slightly polarized, by approximately 4%. And here polarization means that the light waves were aligned to specific orientation, which can happen when light passes through or reflects off certain types of material. And so together these two clues provided a bit more information about what's blocking the light. It was very likely made out of large grains, specifically around 20 micrometers in size, and very likely made out of carbonaceous material or water ice. So not common space dust, which is usually made out of silicates or carbon dioxide ice, which would not produce these results. And the presence of these very large grains suggests an environment very similar to a typical protoplanetary disk or essentially a ring system, which is then responsible for forming various planets. Or this could also be an evolved debris disk, where smaller and lighter grains have been swept away and only larger grains remained. And so essentially the structure here was made out of larger particles and seemed to lack anything small. But this was not the only discovery. Here, by looking at the star's light and the spectra during dimming, Astronomers also discovered a hint of a potential binary companion, a much smaller, cooler M dwarf star, possibly 0.25 times the mass of our Sun, that was potentially responsible for some of this periodicity. And so this kind of points at a very specific setup. Here the blocking material seems to be part of the circumbinary disk, or basically a disk of gas and dust that usually orbits both the main F-type star and in this case, it's M dwarf companion. And quite a few similar disks have been discovered before, with many of them eventually resulting in circumbinary planets. Here's roughly what this would look like if you were to kind of accelerate this, just to see how the interaction evolves. 
And so in this particular scenario, the 43.8 year period seems to represent half the time it takes for this disk to complete its full wobble, or its precession. And based on some of these preliminary observations, we even discovered something else inside the disk that potentially hints on what's going to happen here later on. For example, there was a strong absorption from neutral sodium gas spectrum, implying that this disk is enriched in a lot of gas. And there were also low ionization metal emission lines, hinting at a lot of different metals that were glowing and were orbiting around these two stars. But in this case, because these metal emissions were very specific, it even became possible to determine the overall orbital speed. Since the velocities here were blue shifted by 26 km per second, it essentially suggests that the gas here was moving toward us and very likely moving around the star. But there was also a discovery of potentially another circumstellar disk that was slightly misaligned. And here this disk contained a lot of hydrogen. So this might be actually a much more complex shape than just a single disk. And not surprisingly, somewhat similar discoveries have been physically observed in a lot of other star systems, with some of these disks possessing really bizarre, very extended and very warped shapes. But even here there's at least one unanswered question. Basically, the age and the existence of this hydrogen disk. Right now it's believed that the star system here is at least 2 billion years old. And so it should not actually contain that much dust and even more importantly, this much hydrogen. And so there's a bit of a discrepancy between what we're seeing and what we should be seeing. But this also basically highlights how little we know about these systems and how these bizarre binaries seem to be able to produce very bizarre shapes and very unusual effects. But based on the presence of metals, based on the presence of a lot of gas, and based on the fact that it shouldn't actually be here anymore, since the star system is really old, the researchers made a somewhat intriguing proposition of why this exists. The fact that we see sodium, and the fact that we see a lot of other glowing metals, provides the most compelling evidence that this is maybe the result of a planetary collision. Or essentially, because this is a binary system and contains a lot of gravitational instabilities, if there were basically two planets orbiting around the system, at some point in the past they might have become destabilized and eventually collided, producing this very bizarre formation. With this catastrophic event populating the entire system with a lot of dust, a lot of gas, a lot of glowing metals, and all of the emissions we seem to be observing. And so here the explanation is that this is maybe not a primordial protoplanetary disk, this is maybe a disk formed following a collision. Especially because the dust particles seem to contain peculiar size, with the much smaller particles missing completely. But at least for now this is just a hypothesis. And if confirmed, this of course would be a groundbreaking discovery. Not only because this is a binary system with a disk produced through a collision of two planets, but also because it contains the leftover from the collision and a lot of additional features that still need to be explained. But we can only confirm all of this with further observations and with additional data. For example, by using submillimeter observations, there's going to be a way to map the circumstellar disk and measure the motion of gas, discovering its true shape. Right now this has not been done yet. But I guess more importantly, for the first time ever we have this example of a regular star, a star not so different from our sun, dimming by such an extreme amount and in such a bizarre way that it was kind of difficult to explain until it became clear that there seems to be a lot more going on here, with all this being a result of a potential catastrophic event several million years ago. And this of course connects us to other dramatic events, such as the Betelgeuse and the Y Canis Majoris events, with those events also potentially caused by some kind of a hidden partner. And so in just the last few years, all of these additional observations reshaped our understanding of stellar evolution and planetary dynamics. Which of course is a great reminder that we live in an incredible time for astronomy and astronomical discoveries. But on that note, once we discover something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.